Okay, so let's get going with some distance time problems. Uh, the approach is going to be very similar, um, except with distance time problems, you're going to see me drawing um, quite a bit more, uh, just because uh, it's very helpful to get an idea of what's going on. So a certain bus is from city M is traveling to city N at constant speed. Okay, so he starts off at M and ends up at N. Uh, while another bus, and, and we'll call this guy um, A, uh, and this guy uh, B. Um, they meet at point P after driving for two hours, okay? Um, and they're both going at the same speed. So, um, okay, well, in other words, uh, the, the distance between them so they met halfway, so they both they both traveled, um, and so, so they're both at speed v. So so in other words, the distance between them is just four lots of v. It's hit them, um, you know, if, if two hours at the speed v does half the distance, then four hours would be the whole distance. So that's that's the first thing we can get from that. Um, and that and that's that's point p halfway between the two. Um, the following day, the buses do the return trip at the same constant speed. One bus is delayed 24 minutes and the other leaves 36 minutes earlier. Okay, so let's just say that um, M is the one that set off earlier. Well, how much earlier than uh, the first bus does he leave? If he leaves 36 minutes early and the other one's delayed by 24 minutes, that means before the other bus has even set off, uh, this first guy's already been traveling for an hour. So he's already here. He's already done V. Um, and then they just meet halfway. So, so how much have they got left? But they've got three V left. And uh, they're going to meet halfway from this point. So they're going to meet somewhere here, uh, which is uh, at a distance of three V over two from there. In other words, uh, this distance is V over two because that it was the whole distance was two V. Um, and so V over two apparently is 24 miles. So V is 48. And the distance is 4v, so 4 times 48 is 192. That's the answer. On a particularly cloudy day, Derek decides to walk back from work. When it is sunny, he walks to a speed of s miles an hour. Uh, where So he's, he's walking back from work, just doing a journey. He walks to a speed of s miles an hour where s is an integer. Okay, that's going to be important. Um, and when it gets cloudy, he increases speed to s plus 1 miles an hour. So at some point it gets cloudy. And so um, his average speed for the entire distance is 2.8 miles an hour. Ah, okay. So therefore, if he's got a speed of s here, and s plus one here, and on average it's 2.8, where s is an integer, then s must be two, because there's no other way of uh, um, getting an average speed of 2.8. Uh, so s equals two, and so now what we can say is, um, well, if he travels a distance x in the sun, um, and then uh, a if he covers a fraction of the distance x in the sun, then he's got a fraction 1 minus x left. Um, and how much time uh, does that part take? Well, that part takes x over 2. And the next part takes 1 minus x over 3. And we know that uh, the distance x over the total time, which is uh, x over 2 plus 1 minus x over 3, must be equal to 2.8, because that's the uh, average speed. And so from that, we can start simplifying. Uh, x over 2, so 1.4x uh, plus 2.8 over 3 minus 2.8x over 3. And so that means that x, uh, so we've got uh, 5.8 over 3 minus 1.4, so 4. Point, let's that over 3, that's 4.2 over 3, equals 2.8 over 3. So we can get rid of the 3s and get that 1.6x equals 2.8. So x must be uh, 
that's not quite right. What's gone wrong? Uh, <laughs> what have I done? Uh, so, ah, on the top, his whole distance is not x, it's simply 1. Right, okay. So, that actually simplifies things a bit. His distance, because we, we said the whole distance was, was 1, x is a fraction of the distance. So, um, Okay, so 1 is equal to, there we go. Um, so then that means that uh, 0.2 over 3 equals uh, 1.4x over 3, which means that uh, 1.4x equals 0.2. So x equals 0.2 over 1.4, which equals 1 over 7. So that's the answer. Nasty question. Jerry and Jim run a race of 2,000 meters. Okay, uh, so we've got 2,000 here. Um, First, Jerry gives Jim a start of 200 meters. Uh, so let's say um, the time Jerry takes to uh, complete the race is T1, and the time T Jim takes to complete the race is T2. So Jerry gives Jim a start of 200 meters and beats him by 30 seconds. So Jim has only done, um, so in other words, T1, the time it takes Jerry to do the race, um, is equal to, and then how much does, how much of the time does Jim take? Um, well, from when he starts, Jim only needs to do nine tenths of the race left. So that will take him uh, 92 over 10. So, um, and he still beats him by 30 seconds. So let's do this in minutes. He beats him by a half. Okay. So that's the first equation we can get. And then secondly, he gives him a start of three minutes, but this time is beaten by a uh, thousand meters. Okay. So now when he gets, when, when uh, Jim uh, gets to the end, uh, Jerry has only done half the race. So that means uh, Jerry has been running for uh, T1 over two. So in T1 over 2, uh, how long has uh, Jim been running for? Well, he's been uh, running for, so T1, and he also gave him a start of 3 minutes. So T1 over 2 plus 3 is equal to T2, because Jim finished this time. Um, and so that should uh, be enough. And so now just... Uh, solving for T1 and T2, um, if we uh, subtract two lots of the second equation from the first, we get to um, minus 6 equals um, minus 11 T2 over 10 uh, minus a half. And that's going to be minus 6. And so uh, getting rid of all the minuses, so... Uh, 5.5 5, uh, equals 11 T2 over 10. So T2 equals 55 over 11, which is 5, which makes T1, uh, T1 over 2 equals 2. And so T1 is 4, and so the answer is 4 and 5. Okay. A man cycling along the road notices that every 12 minutes, a bus overtakes him, and every four minutes he meets meets an oncoming bus. So, okay, a bit of a weird setup. Not particularly clear what's going on, but.
but effectively we've got cyclists going along the road and so we've got buses going this way at speed v buses going this way at speed v and then a cyclist going let's say this way at speed uh let's just call it u okay so then well okay so and if there's a distance uh between buses um of d let's say between buses going the same way well how long does it take buses catching up to him to uh overtake well this is a relative velocity problem in other words the time it will take them will be the distance d between buses over the relative speed which is just going to be v minus u and we know that that is equal to 12. and then similarly for the other way how long does it take buses coming towards him to over to sort of cover the distance well that's going to be relative speed v plus u and that's equal to four um and so from that we can sort of just sort of we can eyeball it and see that u must be um i believe v over two uh that looks like that would work um because we basically uh we have a ratio of three so in, in other words what i'm doing here is uh we get um if we divide one equation by the other we get v plus u over v minus u equals three and so v plus u equals 3v minus 3u and so uh 4u equals 2v and so u equals v over 2. okay and so then um uh if u is v over 2 then uh d is equal to uh well, um, v over 2 times 12, so uh, d is equal to 6v, and that must mean that uh, the time between them, which is d over v, is 6, so 6 minutes. A boat travelled upstream 90 miles at an average speed of v minus 3 miles per hour. Okay, so we went this way for 90 miles and it took him time 90 so t1 t upstream is 90 over v minus 3 then he travels down at v plus 3 so it took him 90 over v plus 3 um, and we know that upstream so 90 over v minus 3 is equal to uh, the trip downstream plus half an hour 90 over v plus 3 plus a half. Uh, how many hours did it take the boat to travel downstream? Okay, so uh, doing this similarly to, I, again, I could solve uh, quadratically, but let's um, try and do this sort of with the guessing method. So first I want to simplify, so divide through by 90, get all the v's on one side. So 1 over v minus 3 minus 1 over v plus 3 is equal to uh, 1 over 180. And so we need uh, two numbers that sort of simplify to have a lowest common factor of 180. Um, and what I'm thinking is, um, oh, this isn't that simple. Uh, maybe, mm, maybe, um, No, okay, so this one isn't obvious at all. So let's uh, actually solve the quadratic. Um, so we can do, uh, this becomes v plus 3 uh, minus v minus 3 equals v plus 3 v minus 3 over 180. 
And so that means that uh, 6 times 180, so uh, 1080 is the product of V plus 3 and V minus 3. Uh, so surely we can get what they are now. Um, So yeah, uh, if the numbers are 30 and uh, 36, I believe, then that will work. So V must be 33. And so how long did it take him to travel uh, downstream? Uh, well, that's V plus 3. So he went at 36. So 90 over 36, uh, which is um, 45 over 80. Oh, well, uh, well, that's just 2.5, right? Car B begins moving at two miles per hour around a circular track with a radius of 10 miles. Okay, so the uh, circumference is uh, 2 pi r, so 4, um, oops, uh, 10, so 2 pi r, so uh, 20 pi. Uh, and 10 hours later, car A travel leaves from the same point in the opposite direction traveling. Okay, so we've got this, this track. Uh, e is going that way, A is going that way, 3 and at 2. Um, after 10 hours, uh, so how long does it take a, um, well, after 10 hours, the uh, car B has um, moved 20 miles. Um, and so he's sort of, he's not even done a full lap yet. He's somewhere over here. And so then they are, at that point, they are traveling toward each other at a speed of five, um, because this guy's going this way at two. This guy's still going this way at three. So they're traveling towards each other at a distance of five. How far away from each other are they? Well, they're at, uh, they've still got 20 pi miles minus 20 to travel. Um, and then uh, we want to talk about when car A has passed and moved 12 miles beyond car B. So in other words, they've got another 20 pi minus eight miles to go. Um, and so the answer, uh, is, well, he's been traveling. How long is it going to take him? So it's 20. So to do this, how long were there that distance and they're moving together at a speed of five so that divided by five which is four pi minus um 1.6 i suppose and so the answer in terms of how long in total has it been traveling well four pi minus 1.6 plus the 10 hours which is four pi plus 8.4 so b okay it takes the high speed train x hours to travel the z my okay so we've got Oh, well, we've got town A here, uh, town B over here, and there's Z miles between them. So what I'm doing here is translating. Uh, the high speed train, it takes him X hours to do that Z miles. So uh, we'll call him speed. Um, he goes at speed V equals Z over X. Okay. And while it takes the regular train y hours so okay the so we'll call him v1 v2 equals z over y that's his speed the high speed train leaves for town a leaves town a for town b at the same time the other one how many more miles will the high speed train have traveled than the regular train when the two trains pass each other okay so what we'll do here is we'll sort of use this as that. So they're going towards that one's going that way at V1. This one's going that way at V2. So they're covering their, their relative velocity is V1 plus V2, and they're covering a distance uh, Z. So the total time taken is Z over V1 plus V2. And how far has, uh, well, let's simplify that. So the total time taken is, uh, z over 
z over x plus z over y. So in fact, we can sort of immediately cancel those z's. And so it's going to be 1 over 1 over x plus 1 over y. OK, which we can simplify a bit into uh, x uh, y over x plus y. So that's the time. And so then uh, how far has the high speed train traveled? Well, distance high speed will just be uh, its speed times its time. So uh, z over x, uh, that's its speed times the time it traveled for. That's x, y over x plus y. And then the distance of the low speed train is uh, its speed, z over y times its time, x, y over x plus y. And so then how many more miles? Well, we can simplify these a bit. So uh, that's z, y over x plus y. And this guy is z, x over x plus y. And so what's the difference in those distances? Well, it's just one minus the other. In other words, z, uh, y minus uh, x over x plus y. And that should be our answer. So z, y minus x over x plus y. So a. Okay, A and B ran at the respective constant rates a rate uh, at their respective constant rates a race of 480 meters. In the first heat, okay, so we've got a race of 480, uh, and so okay, there's some suspicious numbers here. In other words, um. Uh, if A takes time, if, if we say A takes time TA and B takes time TB to run the whole, the whole race, uh, then, uh, if A is given B a head start of, uh, 48 meters, then B only has to run, uh, nine tenths of that distance. So in other words, you can say nine TB over 10, that's how much time TB is taken, and that must be equal to uh, however long TA is, uh, but then uh, TA beat him by a tenth of a minute. So uh, we want everything in uh, meters per second. So let's say, uh, let's do this in seconds. So we beat him by six seconds. So we've got that equation first. In the second heat, A gives B a head start of 144 meters. Uh, so in other words, A has to still run the whole race. So we've got TA and that's equal to, well, 144 meters is uh, three tenths, I believe of, yep, three tenths of 480. So that's gonna be, uh, B only has to run seven tenths of the race. Um, but he's beaten by one thirty of a minute. So he took, uh, two seconds longer. There we go. Uh, what is B's speed in meters per second? So in other words, we just need to find out TB. So let's eliminate TA. So uh, 9 TB over 10 minus 6 equals 7 TB over 10 plus 2. And so we've got 2 TB over 10 equals 8. And so TB must be uh, 40. And so he's run 480 meters in 40 seconds, which means he's running at 12 meters a second. So be A. Okay, a hiker walking at a constant rate of four miles per hour, so the hiker is going this way at four, is passed by a six traveling in the same direction along the same path at a constant rate of 20. Okay, so this is the hiker and this is the cyclist. He's going at 20. Um, the cyclist stops to wait for the Hike of five minutes after passing her. Well, okay, so what's the, re again, relative velocity? So the relative velocity is equal to 16. Uh, so five minutes, that's a twelfth of an hour. So in five minutes, we've gone, uh, the cyclist has gone 16 uh, times one over 12. So 16 over 12 miles past her. So uh, four over three miles. So we're sort of just, again, just translating. We're at four over three ahead. This is the cyclist. This is the hiker. Um, while the hiker continues to walk to concentrate, how many minutes must the cyclist wait until the hiker catches up? Well, okay, now it's much simpler because the uh, 
hikers just moving along at four. So, uh, well, it'd take a third of an hour, so 20 minutes. Alex and Brenda both stand at point X. Alex begins to walk away from Brenda in a straight line at a rate of four miles per hour. OK, so they're both at X. Uh, a is going that way at four. Uh, one hour later, um, so so one hour later, A is here, and that is actually four, four miles away. Um, Brenda begins to ride a bicycle in a straight line in the opposite direction at a rate of R miles per hour. OK, so that's now going that way at R. And uh, this guy's still going that way at four. So the relative velocity again is going to be R. Oh, wow. Well, uh, relative velocity yet again is now going to be R plus four. Um, which the following represents the amount of time in terms of R that Alex will have been walking when Brenda has covered twice as much distance as Alex. Okay. So, um, well, when so what is uh, the distance of uh, Brenda? Distance of Brenda is equal to um, just uh, R times the time that uh, the time that uh, Alex has been walking in total minus one because Brenda started an hour late, uh, and then the distance of Alex is equal to just four times the time that Alex has been walking. And so we want distance of Brenda to be twice distance of alpha. So in other words, we just want R T minus one to equal two times 4T, which is eight T. And uh, we want, so in other words, we just want to find R in terms of T. So we need to um, get uh, T on its own. So R T minus R equals eight T. So, uh, uh, da, 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 uh, R minus eight brackets T equals R, so T equals R over R minus eight. And so we looks like we've got C. So hopefully you can notice it's all about translation and being okay with sort of, you know, defining terms. And just remember that these questions are very hard. So um, don't worry if, you know, they are tricky. Train A traveling at 60, I'm assuming that's miles an hour, although it would be a very slow train, um, leaves New York for Dallas. So that can be New York. This can be Dallas at 6 p.m. Uh, and so he's going this way at 60. Uh, B also, uh, B leaves New York for Dallas at 9 p.m. So that's three hours later. So let's just sort of say where A is. A at that point is 180 away he's gone for three hours and so from that moment onwards we've now got this guy going this way at 90 and uh this guy's still going this way at 60 and so it looks like it's probably gonna be relative velocity um train c leaves dallas for new york at 9 p.m okay uh and so c is going now this way at vc uh if all three trains meet at the same time between New York and Dallas, okay, well, we know we can first of all work out when uh, trains A and B meet. Um, because, well, this guy's B, this guy's A. So uh, V rel, the relative velocity of A and B, is just that B is gaining on A at a speed of 30. He's got um, 80, uh, sorry, he's got um, 180 miles to catch up. So that's going to take him 180 over 30, or in other words, uh, six hours. And so uh, that means that VC has now traveled uh, six hours in this direction. So he's traveled six VC. Uh, and we know that in that time, B has traveled six hours to the right. So that's going to be uh, 540, six times 90. And so therefore we have 540 plus 6 VC is equal to the distance, which is 1260. And so just looking at that, 6 VC equals uh, 720. And so VC looks like it's going to be 120. And so the answer is C.
OK, so that concludes our distance uh, rate questions and I'll move on to some other types of word problems in the next video.